Yo, what's up, everybody? We are back. This is the second episode of No Labels Necessary. The podcast is back. We all gave us great feedback in uh, for the first one, and we're happy to be here with the with the second one. So, as y'all know, this is Brand Man and Corey. We are here today, gathered here today to bless y'all with some TikTok topics, some some uh, artist music marketing topics, a, a few finesses that we've noted going around in the industry that y'all should be aware of and inspired by. Yes, yes. So uh, let's start it off this uh, this way, Corey. One of our topics that we talked about last time, M tripping, tripling. Yeah, EM, e I think it's EM Tripling. EM Tripling. Yeah, e he had a beautiful, beautiful viral video. We talked about it last time. We talked about how he finessed an L and made it a W Crazy. by taking these 13 people at his show, all right, and highlighting that experience on Twitter and tweeting about it. Hey, I'm grateful for this experience. And then that shit went viral, right? Yeah. And then there was another video that went viral from the same show. You want to talk about that? Yeah, man. So... I mean, it's pretty new at this point, so it's a little bit of speculation involved. People might, okay, okay. You know, it, might, it might not be pieced all the way together, but I feel like by the time it comes out, it'll, it'll be a pretty 100%. Ain't no speculating, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but pretty much what, what happened was is there's this clip that's moving in the meme space of uh, he's on stage at another show, and he's just like talking, you know what I'm saying, doing the little, the little, you know, the little talk artists do in between each song. Mm -hmm. And a random fan, you know, in the crowd is like, yo, bro, can you shout me out? And he's like, yeah, I shot you out. What's your name? And the fan's like, uh, 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 and, you know, the whole crowd like goes crazy. He's like, oh, and the is like, oh, bro, forgot his name. And the crowd goes crazy. He's like, uh, uh, I don't know when that show happened. It looks like it was pretty recent. I'm going to guess no. like. Bro, that looked like the same show. You think so? That that looked like the same yeah. show. We got we, we can like contrast outfits. We are gonna throw that up on the screen. Yeah, we probably need even play that for you. But I I think that was actually the same show. That now that would be crazy because then now the conversation would need to change to <laughs> maximizing your investment <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to getting content at these different events. But I mean, either way, like it was dope because I think it speaks to how a lot of the time we talk about. Like you can manipulate conversation, right? Like you can you can shoot things and and use like these meme pages and these different repost pages to create a narrative that could go m much further than you planned for it to go. Cause I don't know, I, I personally have my reasons for why I didn't believe it was real. You know, um, but some some things about the, the technical aspects of it felt felt a little staged. You know what I'm saying? Like we we do this a lot, so like we see it a lot. I, I can tell when it's real and when somebody's acting it out. But it still is genius nonetheless. Cause I've been seeing it on all the meme pages I follow on Instagram at least all day. <laughs> at <laughs> least the really big ones. Like definitely the really big ones, but a lot of smaller pages are picking it up. I've been seeing it on some Twitter threads and it's like he created this oh, oh that's it. Oh yeah, he created this like crazy organic moment. This is one hundred percent, bro. This is one hundred percent the same show. It's the same show. I'm looking at his outfit. That's oh, it is the same. That, show. That's the same show. Damn, that's, that's crazy. That's the same show. So, so uh, let's break this down because I know we've kind of talked. I want to make like, y'all need to understand why we're even talking about this the yeah. way we're talking about it, right? So, I'll say I'll go for the maximizing values. No, nah, no, nah, we're gonna skip to this. What did What did you find out? What did you notice about the back end of this guy? I, I want I want to let you you know drop. Go ahead, drop the bomb, bro. Who's this guy associated with? Oh yeah, so uh, I have a really good friend who, well okay, so his manager is Snot's manager, the rapper Snot. Um, I have a friend who is good friends with Snot's manager, thus how I was able to get this information and piece it together. But there were things about it I feel like I would have pieced together anyway, but this came direct from the source of like, yo, like, friend being like, yo, I gotta text this dude and be like, this shit is genius, because this shit is genius, what y'all just did. And that count from what I've just, the conversations I've had with my friend, like apparently like his manager does shit like that all the time. Like they're 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 pretty good at like getting the artists to do these things at events that they can later flip into like social media viral moments. Um which is interesting because I think that's how Snot might have kinda came. I think Snot came up in the meme the meme world and yep. the meme culture, right? So a lot of ways he has yep. these people behind him that understand how to make an organic looking meme moment. Which I don't know if it's just 
well known, but you know, we've kind of seen is like you can crack the meme market. That's a very powerful, very cheap engine to learn how to best. tap into. It's crazy, right? Because yes. like you could literally get a post, I don't know, couple hundred bucks, couple couple of tens of bucks that gets millions of views if you do it right. Because that whole community is oriented around just sharing shit, right? Like one meme page posted, it's thirty of them that like them. They all start sharing, and it, it can create like a really quick like like viral looking moment that could mm. lead to a viral moment. Because you know another another artist that did the meme strategy recently. Uh, is Lil Yachty with Poland. I don't know if you heard that song. I've seen uh, clips. Yeah. By, no, yeah, I did listen to it because he actually mentions Poland in it, right? Yeah. I saw, yeah, one little snippet. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, it's almost the same strategy. But I, it's it's this same strategy, but to a higher degree. Like Yachty really blasted the meme pages like that. Couple of days to week after, it, as it was coming out to when it came out, he was on the meme pages hard. Like so, this to me is like smaller version of that. They probably don't have the craziest budget to keep it going the same way Yachty would have it going, right? But I will argue that this is probably a little bit more impactful because one, he just had that conversation about the show. That that was what, like two weeks ago? A week ago, two weeks ago? A week ago. So it's like, all right, he's a newer artist. We have to figure out how to keep him in the conversation for as cheap as we can possibly do it for because we don't want people to forget about him and think of him as like, oh, he's just the guy from that viral tweet. All right, Bell, let's create another one. Which now that we're seeing from the same content, from the same day. It's like, let's put enough time out there that this doesn't look obviously fake. Because I think the clips that came out like too close together would have been obvious that it was fake, right? Mm -hmm. And there's probably some people who peeped it too. They're probably getting like, oh, this shit from that same shit, right? Yeah. But they put enough time in between it to make it feel like a true organic viral moment. The artist isn't doing too much around it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, bro, if it wasn't for some of the back end mechanics of it and just us knowing who we know, I mean, that shit might have got me. You know, I might have fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a fact, man. That's a fact. And I want to say, like, whenever we, we talk about this type of stuff here, it's not to, like, out somebody. We're not any industry plant type people here, yeah. right? Because, obviously, we're the people behind many of these types of campaigns. We're here to say, like, this shit is amazing. Big up it. And y'all should be inspired by their ability to take a small moment and then flip it and to create a conversation. Cause I agree that's way more empower, uh, powerful than what Lil Yachty is doing. Yeah. Just because, you know, Yachty has a name, so he's getting that recognition. Yeah. So he, Buddy couldn't necessarily do the same thing because he's a small artist. So people just feel like, oh, y'all are just throwing this artist in my face. Yeah, but people exactly. already know Yachty's big. Exactly. So it exactly. kind of feels validated. But even beyond that, the clip that they're sharing has more natural virality where Lil Yachty's campaign is just awareness. You know who Lil Yachty is, he just dropped something, yeah. great. This, I'm gonna share it, right? Yeah. I'm gonna talk about what EM Triplin did in his first one, especially, even if you think about the order. It's perfect that he thanked these people. Oh man, this is a, um, you know, I didn't have that many people sh uh, blow up on my, come to my show, that blows up. Now you're aware of them. So then when you see the second clip about the fan at his show, yeah. Right now, you know who the artist is. Yeah. Right, it's more context to it. Yeah. Right, because um, yeah. that clip right there, without that, you're like, I don't know. Now, why do I care? Why do I care? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, him being having Snot's manager behind him is just just shows that they have smart people in their corner. Yeah. And that's what you're supposed to be to, You need to get some smart people in your corner or think creatively. And that's all I always, I always say with artists. Like, people stop short with the music so much versus applying the creativity towards their music videos, towards yeah. their shows, towards their marketing. This is that, like, to a T, to yeah. a T. Yeah, and shout out to them for having the idea on the fly. Though. Like, I don't, I don't know which came first like the yeah. flipping I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this probably came first and then the the moment that just flipped because it was like oh it happened we might as well you know get some get something out of this yep but yeah bro that's a that's that's definitely a bang for buck bro two viral moments out of uh out of one show bro like hey, it's crazy the way it's going, it might be a third one coming man we don't yeah. know yeah we'll, facts, facts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see but with that being said you had um put me on to this coil away uh, clip oh yeah with her talking about TikTok. I want to see what you guys think about that. So we'll play it, and then yeah, of course the comments. So let's watch it real time. Man, EJ can edit this. 
Me. Everybody tried to shit on me and was like, oh, you're a TikTok artist and all this other stuff. And I was like, man, listen, literally, I know y'all all right. Hmm. Listen, I'm a, all right. Hmm. 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 You knew something Whoa. different. He was like, OK. I didn't give a fuck. Huh. Once I knew that the TikTok drove streams, I'm about my money and I'm mm. about strategy. Mm. I don't have no time to have pride and ego on people that's gonna be like, oh, you're a TikTok artist, that and third. Cool, if you don't appreciate the music and you hating because you can't do it the way I did, mm. then that's cool. Mm. But check the numbers out. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Hey, man. Like, first of all, she coming with a different energy than what I'm used to seeing her. Yeah. Uh, she tired like, of the internet bullying, bro. Like, I like she's that. Sick of it. She gonna level it up. I like that energy right there. That's. Okay, that's that's beautiful. So it, it's a a lot of things about that. Like, yeah. so many artists talk about like I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, and half the times it's fear, ego, or laziness. Yeah, that's what I see in yeah. most cases. Where it's like, all right, if you really want this, if you hate your job, you hate your existence at whatever profession and what you're doing for work today. Come on, we talk about people selling their souls yeah. <laughs> to be successful. Yeah. And when they talk about doing anything that's necessary, we talk about people sleeping with people. We talk about all this crazy shit. Bro, if it just means you got to create some TikTok videos yeah. or because and this is a conversation. Remember, before TikTok, we were having these conversations. With artists. I don't want to post on Instagram. Yeah. I'm not a, you know what I mean? The I'm type of person. Artist. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a I'm SoundCloud. Not a it's like do what you need to get in the door. Right. Especially when it's something like this. It's just your behavior. It's not yeah. even like legit like doing something grimy or against your ethics and then when you get control of the situation then you can manipulate more how you brand yourself the actions you take but you need to get a fan base for cheap as possible unless you just want to have somebody put money into you super early and then they own you so you want to get owned or do you want to do the work to get on but own yourself right yeah. that's yeah. what it comes down to me yeah i mean i like i like more so the fact that it, it, we see like these platform slurs come up like you said, like every every it's <laughs> basically yeah. what they are, bro. Oh, you're yeah. just a oh you yeah. it was you know 2016. Oh, you're just a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah, right. Then it's like oh you're just a YouTuber. Oh, you're just a you're just a TikTok artist, right? And she said something in it that was like very important to me. But she was like, bro, this shit just draw this shit draw strings, bro. I don't care. I don't care what you said. Like I can see that a result is lead, leading to to well a effort is leading to b result, and. Dude. I I think the clip shows a lot of growth for her because to your point when you're saying like she she's bringing different energy, I feel like she's talked to somebody or come to the realization that like yo like I'm in a unique position, bro. Like everybody doesn't get. I mean, she's had like two three viral TikTok hits, bro. Most people ain't even gonna get one. You know what I'm saying? Let alone like two or three. Yeah. Especially the artists of like her stature, we might see like bigger artists get multiple TikTok hits back to back. But a, a new act, but she's only been in the game for like a year and a half, two years at this point, something yeah. like that. You know, seriously. So I feel like she's had the realization, like, yo, I'm in a very unique position where, like you said, I could post a video on TikTok, post five of them, and my shit goes crazy to the same degree that someone that maybe spent a hundred thousand dollars to go to. Thanks. And, and, and I don't know. It, it looks like a lot of maturity, a maturing happening. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody broke it down for her and numbers. Like, hey, man, this shit equals. This and money. Look at Period. what you say, bro. <laughs> you know? And that's the game. And that's the game. And that goes always back where I say what I do like about street artists that a lot of the more creative, non street or suburban artists or uh, other genres don't quite get. Yeah. Like the street artists put in the work. All right. They understand business yeah. a little bit more, maybe because it's the hustle background. Yeah. But it's like, what's going towards the result? I don't care too much about the opinion of people, what's talking and conversations on the internet. I ain't into that. Like yeah. little baby say, you know, it's just like, I want the result, period. Yeah. And a lot of times, other genres tend to, they can, they over concern themselves with, with other people's opinions when, I don't know, maybe you have. Maybe it's like a real life thing, bro. If, if I'm on the streets and I'm hustling and I'm used to, and I'm in some life, you know, threatening circumstances, and I might need to get off the block. You know, I'm, been, I'm trying to figure out a way to get off the block. I don't got time to think about all the other stuff. Yeah. But you're in a position of comfort. You want to get on in the exact way that you want to get on. It's more of an entitled mentality. Yeah. Which is cool yeah. if you can make it happen that way. But cutting off all your options, like. It's yeah, just, it's just like, bro, it's, it's, this is a hard, this game is hard enough as it is, especially when you talk about the money part. Yeah, and I think too, a lot of it comes from like you're taking feedback and criticism from people that don't get it. 
But I actually have a, a really funny story that kind of talks about this. <laughs> it's, I, I think it's funny. It's sad, but it's kind of funny. But okay. I was in like middle school, right? Uh-huh. When I was in middle school, I used to want to play soccer. Oh man, right? I can't even see it. Yeah, I, right, crazy. <laughs> but middle school was when we moved from like the country to like the hood. So right. it was, I, I remember this one day I had a game and I came outside in my uniform and this dude was like, bro, what the fuck you got on? I was like, it's a soccer uniform. He's like, bro, you playing soccer? Nigga, get on this basketball shit. And they would <laughs> bully me about it, you know what I'm saying, about yeah. not playing basketball. Until eventually I gave up and I stopped playing soccer. Yeah. Started going to play basketball with the hood kids. You grow up, you know what I'm saying, you get more into soccer, but you start seeing soccer players go pro at like 12. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they be making millions of dollars by the time they 16. They retire at what, like 27, Bro, 20. I was ever. just listening to something the other day. <laughs> uh, is it Lionel Messi? I think it's Lionel Messi. Yeah. He has a four year, $600 million contract, bro. Yeah. Four year, $600 million. That's That's crazy. Far beyond. That's bigger than baseball and uh, basketball. It's crazy, bro. So it's like, it's like I learn no stuff like that now. And I look back on anything like, damn, bro, like, what would have happened if I kept? playing soccer because I was like 11 10 or 11 you know what I'm saying so but that yeah. goes back to what I was saying about the call everything like you I was taking in feedback and criticism from people that, that don't get it like them, them niggas didn't know like you said the messy shit they didn't fucking know you know what I'm yeah. saying where soccer players could go and how fast it could happen if I maybe talk to somebody that plays soccer they're probably like nah bro you tripping bro like stick this shit out you know <laughs> right. what I'm saying like keep doing this shit right so that's why I say I feel like she had a conversation with somebody or somebody broke some numbers down to her or something clicked for her to maybe see it as like, yo, like I'm I'm lucky, bro. Like I'm one of the lucky few people that get this degree of a TikTok moment. We see it come and go, right? The people like to joke about the fact that like a lot of them come and then they fall off, but it's like a lot of people don't even get the opportunity to fall off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. even get the chance to fall off. You gotta be in the game to fall off. All right. And so I personally like the energy she's coming with. Because it, it, to me, I feel like it's going to make her take the platform more seriously right, moving up. in the future. And that's just going to strengthen the hold she has, bro. Especially with the age of the TikTok fans, bro. Like, they're going to, people joke about them not coming to shows and shit with her. But it was like, yeah, most of her fans, because of TikTok, probably are young. They're probably 13, 14, 15. And they ain't got money like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's all it is, yeah. Unless she quits in the next three to five years, bro. She's going to be good, bro. Like, as soon as yeah. they, they get the bread and they like, oh, I I remember her from the TikTok days and she's still going. You know, maybe by then she's dropped, like, more music that people like. She gets a catalog, right? Like, she's going to be crazy, bro. It's going to be it's gonna be yeah. fucking stupid. So, yeah, bro. I don't know. Somebody tell Cole, right? We said, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> keep up the good work. Don't let them talk you off your pedestal, bro. Hey, no, nah, that's... <laughs> No, that, that that's real though, man. Like you really got to control who you listen to for yeah. all this stuff and the ego stuff. Like dead that in this in this era, bro. Like do what you gotta do to get on. Just don't do anything too wild where you know you just you just out of out of pocket. What's uh? I can't remember his name now. Bam, boom, a uh, boom, boonk. There yeah. we go. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's <laughs> that was just. <laughs> That was so far out of pocket. <laughs> they all messed that up. And, like, and <laughs> the music didn't really back it up. His music was doing way better than it should have been doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how much of a you know attention grabber he was. But imagine he actually had some good music. He probably would have made. Yeah, it would have been crazy, I mean? bro. Because yeah. attention is the hardest part of the game. Literally. Like getting attention is like, I don't know, I feel like making quality to good music is easier than it's ever been. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I mean, even though I guess the process of get, actually, I'll say this: the process of getting attention is actually pretty easy too. If you if you if you know, you know enough, what you're doing, hell yeah, yeah, it's easy. It's retaining the attention that's the hard part, you know, mm. like because it's like everybody has so many different things that they could be paying attention to, to to instead of you. So it's like now you have to consistently prove to people why they should be paying attention to you, right? So really, really, really interesting hamster wheel you get on. You know what I'm saying? As a yeah. <laughs> as an artist or, or right. a creator of any type, but it's just like these platforms give you the vehicle to be able to access all these people if you choose to c- crack it correctly. What you choose to do with it after that point is up to you, you know what I'm saying? Some people are gonna use it and drop the bag, some people are gonna use it to pop themselves off into, I don't know, the next massive artist, but it's like the end of the day, bro, it's just a, this is a, just a hub of people. That's it. How are you gonna, what are you gonna do with these people, you know what I'm saying? That's it. And with that TikTok conversation of mine, <laughs> we gotta play that, uh. Steve Lacey clip. Oh, yeah. Which was, bruh, oh, man. I thought this was so amazing in the wrong ways. <laughs>
the way nobody sang the next verse embarrassing as Alright, so yeah, man, that uh <laughs> but to me, one, we already know like TikTok is literally the most extreme version of just hearing yeah. snippets of a song, right? Yeah. But we've always had that experience with before TikTok. There's plenty of songs that you know that because they were so big and it's not even like your particular bag, yeah. but you know the song because it was like an old school song or yeah. it was just a massive pop song in a different genre. And you know, you're like, oh yeah, I know that song. You don't know it, know it. So TikTok puts that out there. But hey, first of all, they're at your show. Yeah. Facts. So you still got the bag, right? Yeah. The win is still there. <laughs> Every time an artist decides to shut the hell up and put the mic out there, it's a risk. Yeah. Period. I was just at uh, one music fest and it was like the, uh, the Jeezy set, and it, it was one of his B sides. Yeah. And I heard part of the crowd get quiet. Some yeah. people knew it, but it was part of the crowd. Like, like I don't care who you are, there's always the risk there. So one, hey, bro, it just is what it is. That's that's a part of the risk that you take when you do that, but. Two, is TikTok ruining music? Do you feel like that goes to TikTok or what? No, I, I think I think that's more of a reflection of just Steve. No, not Steve. Steve's father, bro. I ain't gonna put it on Steve. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it, Steve, bro. Hey, that wasn't me, nah, bro. Nah, I fuck with this shit. <laughs> hey, I'm, no, 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 I fuck with you. I was just trying to bait him into something. You know, so. Yeah, but I, I think it's more of a reflection of just consumer behavior. You know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get too technical into it because I don't feel like I have the, the, the degree to get too technical into it. But, bro, people have kind of evolved to be these short attention span people. You know what I'm saying? We all don't pay attention to yeah. things for too long. And that isn't super shocking to me because I feel like if the ringtone era was still around, like, the ringtone era makes me think of that, right? Like, remember that shit, bro? It was yeah, like, you, yeah, bro. you would buy Hell the yeah. shit because you knew 20 seconds of it. You know what I'm saying? And then the rest of it started playing. You're like, oh, that's the part where it hang up. So I don't even need to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I don't even need to learn the rest of this. So I think, like, I don't know. I think people, like, looking for something to blame. Because I don't, I don't feel like anything at this point can truly ruin music. Like, music is so big, bro. It would take a very powerful entity. It would be like Drake, Bad Bunny, and Olivia Rodrigo just banding together for the greater evil of society, you know what I'm saying, to bring down the music industry. Of this. And that probably still wouldn't fucking do it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, I don't think these things ruin the music industry. I think they they uh, they show artists a side of user behavior they're not used to seeing. Mm. Because I think, well, especially a lot of newer artists are gonna have to understand is that like, you are a part of a cultural phenom that's not going to be understood for another like five to ten years. You know what I'm saying? saying we, we, we can look back on that's the real. ringtone shit that's and the mixtape shit and dissect it and break down why that shit worked, bro. Nobody's going to understand now for like another five to ten years, right? So it's like you're a part of it. So you are going to see things and be a part of things that on paper do not make sense to you. You know what I'm saying? Because nothing has ever come along to like really show this in that, that type of way before. So I feel like, like you said, bro, they had the show. They probably bought merch. Money. You know what I'm saying? They probably... Money. They probably went home and talked about how great of a time they had. Maybe even listen to the rest of your catalog. Maybe that was an eye-opening moment for all of them. They all went like, "Damn, I should go listen to the rest of this, the rest of this <laughs> song and figure I out the words for it." Like, I, don't I don't know what come after that shit. <laughs> but it's like, bro, you you won at least for what most artists are looking for. Mm -hmm. they came to the show, they, they knew the song enough to come to the show, spend some money. Now it's up to you as an artist to, I think, keep them interested enough that they care to learn. The rest of the song, the rest of the catalog. That's the part right like there, bro. Yeah. Because this is your job, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, we got to remember, this is your job. So, yes, it would be nice if the fans listen to everything. But when they, they're at your show, we keep repeating that part back because it's so hard to get people to your show. Yeah. And that's money that you're getting exchanged for that relationship. So, yeah. one, it's your job for the music to be good enough that people want to listen to more of it, because let's be real, some of these songs, that part is I the part. It. Yeah, that's it. It ain't nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> like, so you don't deserve for them to listen to the whole thing. I don't feel that way about Steve shit. I really, really fuck with that last project, but 
Like, still, they are at the show. It's yeah. your job to put on a hell of a performance so people, like, just rock with you in the future and they follow your next thing. Yeah. That experience was so great. So I want to come to him um, to his next show. I want to go listen to the rest of the project, like, give them an experience or perform that song so good, and now they want to go listen to it, in a, you know, in their own room, and now they're associating with that moment. So if you can, like, just stay humble with it. Yeah. And keep putting in that work. And I understand. Matter of fact, Gary V does this. He, he's always good at getting ahead of this stuff, stuff and playing that game. Like you ever seen Gary V when Gary V was already Gary V to you, right? Yeah, he'll yeah. go into a room and he was like, I know half the room doesn't know me. Like who doesn't know me up here? Yeah. Right? And he'll see, oh yeah, I'm glad. I love that shit. You know Gary, right? You yeah. know? <laughs> and be like, all right. And then my job is to like, you know, basically. When you make, over. Yeah, when you yeah. over, right? I know I seem like a sales, uh, a, 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 a snake oil salesman, da, 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 da. Right? But. This is my job to keep staying consistent. You might not even like me now, but eventually you see this stuff play out and, and yeah. say Gary's a dope individual and he's already got millions of followers, right? That's the mentality that an artist really has to yeah. has to go at it with. Right? That's kind of why Kanye still like he <laughs> I think it comes from a slightly more insecure place, but that's why he goes like so hard still where I think he's aware of the lack of awareness of him. Like yeah. he has this thing where he wants to dominate and continue to make people acknowledge him in the way that he wants to be acknowledged, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, better or worse, to see, you know, that's a whole nother conversation I ain't trying to have today. <laughs> but the fact is, the impact is the same. You continue to get known, continue to get talked about, and the growth continues to happen. Yeah, and, I, and two, to like the point you made, I think about, there's different types of people that, that come to these shows, right? So you have your... Right. Your diehard fans, which is, it's not like it wasn't anybody in the crowd not singing the words. Right? They, they were drowned out by the people that didn't know. So you have your fans. They were drowned out by silence, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, people were still singing. They just were singing no, the hook. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you. <laughs> like, you got the fans. You got maybe a pseudo fan. Like, I know the song enough, so maybe I want to go. And then you got the people that probably don't really know who you are. Their friend probably brought them. Maybe right. they've kind of heard of you before. Right. Maybe it was like walking past the venue and saw the line outside. I was like, oh, this is pretty crazy. Well, probably not see like his tickets are probably sold out. But you know, yeah. but you have these different groups, and I think like I don't know. One thing I wish I would have saw him do in that clip, and maybe it did happen, but I feel like he should have stopped the crowd and been like, he should have acknowledged it, bro. He should have been like, yo, like I see everybody in the room doesn't know all the words, so look, I'm about to teach it to y'all real quick. And then we're gonna start this shit back from the top. See, that's, that that's that next level performance. Performance skills, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy, bro. Like it flip the flip the moment. So I wish he would have did that. But I mean, he's not out here like ranting about it. So I mean, he's handling it well. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah, because that was his fan page. I, I thought that was him at yeah. first, but that's like his fan page. Yeah. But hey, you know, like on the other side, going back to the beginning of the pod, man, we could have could have made this a way bigger viral moment. Y'all should be yeah. pushing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Like, that could be that's a whole true. thing, and that could start an industry conversation, and people, you know, like, I could see that being pushed and, and having its own organic effect, yeah. period. Yeah, right? I was kind of having a moment on Twitter. That's what I saw at first. Well, I, said, I think I dropped it. Yeah, yeah, that was the link. The link, yeah. But it's bro. not viral enough, yeah. though. <laughs> he got to give it the attention. That's all, yeah. yeah. It's not, or his team needs to, like, drop it on some meme pages. Yeah. That could become a legit conversation, again. Is TikTok ruining music, but centered around his shit, he still gets the attention. So, um, you know, look, th this TikTok thing, I, I get that it's his own beast. And <laughs> it brings, like Ja'Cory said, or I think that was a really good point. This is a moment that no one understands right now. People probably aren't going to understand it for a good four or five years. So just know that this is the time that you're in. Yeah, so like you can't really make any wrong moves because there's no there's no wrong moves. Exactly. You know I mean, nah, that's that's not true, but you, you can only make so many wrong moves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then going back, yeah. bro, it's, it's the long game, bro. It's like these fans gonna grow up. You give them a good show, a good experience, a good performance. They're gonna stick around, man. They'll learn the words eventually. And then you know, going back to what I was saying about Coyle Ray, unless you plan on quitting anytime soon, then you're gonna be good, bro. They'll know the words of the next show. That's Facts. all that matters. Facts. <laughs> Now, with, with that being said, just a little bit deeper because we had a con uh, we had a conversation yesterday with mm -hmm. a uh, you know an individual in the industry that you know has a nice nice amount of clout in what he does, very very reputable and respectable, and he brought up they were asking us about 
TikTok, some questions around TikTok, because we dropped this really dope report. For y'all who don't know, we did a TikTok global report for 2022, had the industry talking about it, you know, posted in many respectable publications. Y'all should check that out. Maybe we'll drop a link below here. You yeah, know what sure. I'm saying? Yeah. We'll do that. Um, so they were asking us some questions, right? Now, one thing that he said that a lot of managers were complaining to him about was it being hard to make a hit on TikTok, mm -hmm. right? There was this moment of time where they just felt like it was making some hits, but they feel like that moment is past. Yeah. All right. I'll let you get started on that. I got hella thoughts on it. Obviously we had the conversation already, but like well share some of those thoughts that you shared in the convo. Yeah, man. So I think the the conversation started because we were talking about the artist generated content. And, and so for those who haven't seen the report yet, we we have this term that we use called AGC, which AGC stands for artist generated content. It's Pretty our term. You see that anywhere? That's our term, people. <laughs> let just let it be known. Yeah. So so AGC is basically content that the artist makes and put out on their own platform, um, similar to UGC, which is user generated content, which is content that people outside of the artist make put on their platform. Right. So the conversation was centering around how our report found that most of the most recent TikTok hits their spark was kind of driven by AGC, the, the artist generated content, rather than um, what was more traditional was influencer campaigns. And so I think that we, we're in a, a really unique position where we might be one of a handful of people in the music industry who really, who's like, who've been working TikTok in every version of it, you know what I'm saying? Other than when it was musically, but we, we were we came pretty close after they switched to TikTok. You know right, 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 right. That's, that's ads, influencers. Yeah content advising, manipulation in media. Yeah, all of it. All of it, bro, all of every it. single aspect. So so it's like when we uh, when we were listening to the guy speak, I'm thinking like, okay, this must be coming from managers who maybe are familiar with like 2019, 2020 TikTok. Cause I don't know if you remember that TikTok, but that TikTok was pretty easy to get viral. We was getting like a viral campaign like, like every other week, you know what I'm saying? That was all off of influencers at first too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Cheap. Just, just money being spent taking advantage of the platform, how cheap the attention was, um, and then just blasting it out a lot. The platform was much more simpler back then. You could get a fucking 10 million stream song off a good dance trend, right? You fast forward to 2022, the platform is more mature. You know what I'm saying? Like the creators are talking about a more diverse group of things. The community mm -hmm. as a whole is pretty sick of dancing. Like mm -hmm. they don't, every time we hit an influencer about a dance trend, they're like, bro, please, like, please leave me alone about this. Like, <laughs> so I think it's a lot of these managers and people in the industry who are coming into 2020, 2022 TikTok with 2019 aspirations. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm nice. just gonna be able to pay 50 influencers and it's gonna spark everything off. Or I'm just gonna be able to like get my artist to do a cool little dance trend or something that's gonna spark stuff off. And it's like, no, the platform is one much smarter now. People are, I, I think fans are, are able to pick up pretty quickly on when they're being marketed to. You can kind of feel mm -hmm. the signs out, you know what I'm saying? Like we did with the Eam Trillion post, bro. It's like, you know enough, you can start like, mm, yep. this, this feels like some other shit that was being marketed to me, you know what I'm saying, that, that one time. So it's like the, <laughs> the, the fans are smarter, the platform is matured, and the strategies that work then don't work now. Right, right. Like nine times out of 10 are not gonna work. And so I can understand why they would say it, it is much harder to break an artist on TikTok in that in that regard. You know what I'm saying? And but that's what comes with every platform. There's no every platform time. that gets easier as it builds. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, one of my biggest regrets is not doing YouTube in 2004, bro. I, I wish I had. <laughs> bro, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, being early to YouTube and just staying with it. We're crazy, man. <laughs> man, I know there's people that got big. Like I saw them be big, but. They kind of like felt like it was the ceiling at the time. Yeah, they didn't realize that it was still a place to grow and go. So yeah, no, no, the platform thing is 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 definitely huge. One thing I feel like our managers got to realize, and not just managers, but they mentioned managers. I've, I've been asking this. Like people got to realize when you get something popping on TikTok, it's still no other place that you can get something popping from zero to millions of streams so quickly, so cheaply on a consistent basis, yeah. right? We've seen this happen time and time again. We've done it as an agency time and time again. The difference is, right, when TikTok was super new, super novel, you might've seen some stuff pop and go like 
to hundreds of millions and billions of streams more often. Maybe that was happening more often. I'm not even fully like of that idea. What I think is there's also way more artists in the game. So it's just a, a more legitimate percentage that's reflected. Right. Um, but if you get to millions of streams for basically nothing because of the price of TikTok is not the price of these other platforms in most cases, it's just up to you to keep the thing popping. Like, all right, your shit got to 10 million streams. Nobody's gonna like feel sorry for you because you got 10 million streams and it stopped there. Now you got enough attention to flip to Instagram. Yeah. All right, now you got t t enough attention to flip to radio if you have you know, those relationships begin breaking the artists. We had the convo about Ice Spice, right? Yeah, Remember yeah. Bre breaking, marketing a song is not breaking a song. Breaking a song is not breaking an artist, right? Yeah. So there's more leg to that race, right? I always say if Lil Nas X never made the connection with the labels, right, to do the rest of, of you know, the marketing and, and, and provide the rest of the resources to continue Old Town Road yeah. and take it to his max, he could have just been another internet hit artist, yeah. right? Yeah. Had a nice little viral moment, kept pushing. He was pushing. getting close. He was getting, he was getting close, getting right? Close, yeah. Those windows are small. And, you know, I don't know the back end details of it, like whether it's him smartly understanding the importance of it and relevance of it to his team, however, all right, because that's, uh, you know, that was ran so beautifully, but it literally was the difference between being, I think at that time, it was like the most streamed song of all time. It broke some kind of record. It broke a lot of records, yeah. It broke a lot of records. Yeah. So literally of all time record breaking type stuff to literally just eh, another hit on a radio, uh, on a ra not a radio, on TikTok and, and the rest of the internet. That was the difference, right? So you have to realize you have that window when your stuff pops off yeah. and you need to move quick. And I always, especially new artists, right? Like new artists fail to value the moment right because they don't know that this moment is fleeting mm -hmm. you worked your ass off and finally after two years of like grinding it out i got a song that's just taking it off i'm not even doing anything yeah. i go to sleep i wake up my phone's moving faster i eat some lunch i wake up i got some more followers i got some more streams i got some more views and then they finally take a they take a step back like man some of them honestly right which is something y'all got to work on like that mental work I know uh, I've talked to many artists that'll be like, man, I'm almost scared of it. Yeah. Like I so yeah. much activity. Yeah. I just get off of TikTok. Or I just get off of Instagram. I don't do anything yeah. because like yeah. you get paralyzed. So that's a whole nother conversation that needs to be had. But this moment will not last. You got to capitalize. You can't have no paralysis analysis. You can't just not do anything. Get afraid of negative comments. You, you can't just you know, rest on your laurels thinking it's going to apply to the next song, but that's what everybody does. And it sounds like some managers, they don't quite understand, like, TikTok is what it is. It's up to you to take it to that next level. Like, you never stop working a hit, all right, to that moment. It's gone, gone. Dollars, yeah. All right? It's gone, yeah. gone. So, so I don't know, man. It's so many things about it, like, with, with – it bothers me. Every time somebody attacks a platform, I guess, right? It's just like, come yeah. on, bro, like – the platform, it's a, it, you know, it's it's a gun, right? Yeah. Depends on who has the gun in their hand. You yeah. know what I mean? Gun yeah. ain't good. Gun ain't evil. You know what <laughs> I mean? And shoot, I can look, I can shoot you. Some person will think I'm good. Some person will think I'm evil. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, like all of that is relative. It's just like get go and get whatever you want to. So, yeah. like, um, I think it was some another interesting thing, uh, buddy brought up in that conversation was. TikTok over time, right? He was asking if, if we thought artist-generated content has become more effective over time. Oh, yeah. Has influencers become, um, campaigns effective. become less effective? Because yeah. we had a stat that basically like two-thirds of content, like hits that, that got sparked off or from organic content, artist-generated content, right? Yeah. And, you know, my whole analysis was, look, influencer campaigns are great. If you look, if you look at the the data, right? It was artist generated content. We had you user generated content second, yep. and influencer campaigns and ads were last. Yeah. And when you just think about it, all three those top artists, influencer and user are all content. Yeah. Period. And it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Content works. The only difference between your shit, your artist generated content and influencer content is you get 
unlimited at bats because you got control of this. Yeah. Right? You can keep posting and posting and posting. Influencers, you run out of budget, you have no more influencer campaigns. So it makes sense when you got more chances and you're not spending money for most of the things to pop off, be that. Yeah. right? Because then you have managers and astute marketers like us that are like, yo, let's try to actually make it pop off of artist generated content first and before we pay for it influencers. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the user generated content it happens. Hey, bro, it just is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, like, whatever God does, God does. You know, that, that, that's the luck. I don't even want to say the luck of the draw. That's just, you know, look, if it happens, it happens. So, um, like, the stats make a lot of sense. And in, influencer and user-generated content have not become less impactful. It's just people becoming a lot smarter and understanding the impact of artist-generated content. So, if you ain't creating TikTok content, I know you heard this before, but, yo, it's an L. Yeah, they're locking, bro. And I think, too, like, people understand how to more effectively market their music on TikTok. Because if you, I mean, I think even, like, you know, us in 2019, somebody been like, yo, how do I promote this song? And we've probably been like, mm, you know, yeah. we don't completely understand it yet. But now there are so many examples of artists who've used the platform correctly, um, both in the past and even currently, that, it, it, I don't know, it just, it makes sense. Like even looking at the line right? like artist generated content is the first thing, makes sense. People like to see and hear things from the artist first, right? We like to feel like we're getting that personal yep. connection with them. User generated, generated content, these are the fans of the artist that he got from making the post, right? Influencers, it's like, okay, now he got some, some budget. He found, some, he found the bag somewhere. As, it's like, you don't feel like doing none of that work no more. You just want a little traffic push in the background <laughs> while you go do some other shit. Right. And so, I don't know, it's like, I, that, I guess it makes sense to me because we we see that line happen so many times, right? We see it go from artist to fan to then we guys with influencers and then guys with ads and then just rinse repeat that whole process. That it, it felt like a little bit of like a dub moment. Um, and even though I think the point I made to him was that they're not less effective, it just makes sense to do them at a different point in the artist campaign. Where exactly. Like 2020, 2019, 2020, we were going influencers first, right? So, oh shit, you got a bag, let's just pay as many influencers as possible, let's gas it, let's find a trend. Yep. Probably was around late 2020 when we started noticing like, man, this trend shit is kind of dying off. Uh, we ain't had a viral trend in, in, in months, you know what I'm saying? Also um, remember it was just way more expensive too. Yeah, way more nowhere. expensive, yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more influencers started learning their worth, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> Becoming more high vibrational creatures, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Picking up the information, yeah. probably from people like us. I think about it all the time, but like, damn, man, we probably shot ourselves in the foot, bro, you know? Yeah. But but they, they got the information from wherever they got it from. Yeah, yeah. Know your value, know your value. I mean, and, and it was actually, I think when we started to see it was, well, I don't, I don't know maybe when you saw it, but I know when it clicked for me was the, um, the Nick D campaign was when it, it first kind of hit for me. Which the, part? Um, the artist generated content stuff because we had like 24k golden he was nah bro how did it not click to nick d bro because nick d's fine apple was the first one where i could see it from ground zero up because when he came to us it wasn't going it wasn't like going crazy was it but fast was a a year before that oh you're right that's true i forgot about fast my bad fast (laughs) (laughs) a year before that bro and he, he had zero all, he only had content, so I to me it was cleared in. It was just, I think it was TikTok was still so early and influencers and trends were still working. Well, actually, and that's what I, people still wanted. So yeah. it was no point of really trying to push them to that. That's like my, kind of where my energy was. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I take it back. I do know why Nick D was the first time I saw it because it was the first campaign we had where we try all all of them at the same time and we could really clearly see like what yeah. was driving what was driving what right got you like we saw the portion of that was influencer focus i think we had just got access to ads at the time like he might have been the first no taj was the first ad client so he had to be like the second ad client we ever had for tiktok right so we're learning there and then his shit's the one going it's like damn his shit is going crazy by itself but when we add these other elements to it shit sparked and really went crazy so it's like we yeah. could keep trying to flip the chart and go influencers as and then convince the artists to make content but it's like when that shit is inverted and they can figure the content stuff out first like the rest of that shit is easy you know what i'm saying well i won't say easy but it's, it's much easier than when nothing is happening so that's that's why i said that was when it clicked for me because i could i could look at all three parts of it working together and be like oh no this is clearly the thing that's driving majority of the people with the content and so like 
But I know that was the point when, I mean, I always tell like other people about this, but uh, you know, we had that point uh, that same year where we just like looked at all of our most successful campaigns mm -hmm. and was like, damn, like what's the same thing we got? We got these 10 artists this year that popped off to varying degrees. What's, what do they all have in common? And the one thing that they all had in common was they all were pretty good to really good content creators. Yep. Um, some of them were decent, which we argue like, we don't even need you to be amazing. We just need you to at least be decent. It was at That's least it. be okay, bro. Yeah. Like, but most of the really good ones were like really good to amazing content creators to the point to where when they handed us shit, it almost felt like it was too easy. You know what I'm saying? It'd be <laughs> like, damn, we just gotta set up some ads and hit some info. Like, this is, this is, no, he did most of the work, bro. He yeah. made this shit entertaining and, and all that stuff. <laughs> So I don't know, man. I, I feel like the, the the point we keep making the artists is, bro, if you got the money, do all of it, mm -hmm. right? Like still do all of it. If you don't have the money, you definitely should be doing Wait, the content. Wait, this is stuff. why that's important though, because it goes back to newer artists not quite understanding the how high something can go, right? Yeah. You have that moment again. Oh, I've never had three million streams in thirty days or yeah. sixty days before. So I'm like, yo, I don't need anything else, right? Because yeah. I it popped all off of organic, or maybe it popped off of influencers. Not respecting and understanding where the other aspects lie, right? So it's like, yeah, ads might not be as impactful for creating the spark like artists and generated content, but. It doesn't mean ads can't add value to this campaign. Yeah. It doesn't mean IGPR can't add value to this. It doesn't mean that influencers can't add value to it. It's just used strategically in a different way. Yeah. But so many artists, it's funny because you know we've we've had so many different clients that will move in different ways and they found success in different ways and they'll only swear by that way. Yeah. Next thing yeah. you know, nothing else works. Yeah. Oh man, you know all I need to do is post content. Ads don't work. Then you had an artist that popped off with ads and that's all he sees, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you got the artist that had an influencer campaign or artists that never spent money at all a day in their life because they're, but you got a manager that's a hustler and, and they flip some things, they're creative and everybody just falls into their dogmatic mentality yeah. and tries to preach that nothing else works while we're kind of in the center and like seeing, no, all these things work. Yeah, it's just when you do them, who you do them for, what song, like it's it's an entire machine. So, uh, like to Jacory's point, man, like if something gets popping, like one, it doesn't mean anything else doesn't work. But two, like your song can go farther if you do more. It's the same reason why people will work a song. They'll say radio isn't really responsible for creating hits these days. Yeah, yet. When songs get really popping on the internet, what do they do? They take it to the radio, Yeah. right? Because radio still does have value. You just need to know when to apply the value. Yeah. Like that's that's my point with that. Yeah, all of it really. Yeah. Like we talk about the whole like marketing mix, mix, yeah, ecosystem. Like, oh, this doesn't make sense to do now. This makes sense to do at these points. And it's like the in the ideal world, everybody would do all of it. You know? Yeah. I think in the more realistic world, you kind of find the combination of things that work for you. And then you you get that so tight knit that you feel comfortable enough to experiment, right? Because exactly. you're like, okay, even if this fucks up, I at least got this thing, this system over here working for me. Right. Like, I just feel like, yeah, like too many people write it off as just like, I don't know. I guess writing it off is like, I, I I think it's the work aspect of it. I always go about that, bro. It's like if I tell you go make a post. That shit you gotta do. If you tell me you wanna run some ass, that shit we gotta do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, I really do feel like that's what it boils down to. Cause there's yeah. no way everybody's seeing these same people on TikTok pop off, seeing it the same way. Now we got the report out, so we can definitely be like, ain't no way you ain't you ain't know this shit now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But there's no way that we all for the last like year and a half, two years of the industry have been looking at this shit happen and nobody else is coming to the same conclusion <laughs> that we're coming to. But I refuse to believe that. We might have been the first right. ones to put it, put numbers on it, right? but there's no way we were the first ones to start thinking about it. So I, I have to boil it down to everybody's like, damn, that's how this shit works. Well, I don't really want to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm going to go do this other thing. I hope that works out. And it's like, that is at best stupid, at worst really fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, that's a fact. You already know I'm on your side with that one. Uh, before we get into this next topic, I got a, I got a spam message. Have you been getting these messages? <laughs> this one says, OMG, she will squirt 
all caps, so hard if you <laughs> use this. No, nah, bro. You ain't even getting these? No, nah, bro. bro. I keep my phone number private. Man. <laughs> Look, bro, I ain't doing that. I put sketchy, my number man. in nothing, bro. Like. I blame it on the Democrats, bro. You know, you sign up for some of them campaigns. I know they selling data, bro. <laughs> you sign up like, oh, yeah, I'm going to support this person or, or that person, bro. No, nah, we're selling it to the tech sex workers, bro. That's all kinds of wild. Bro, I've gotten this. It'll be like, <laughs> make your junk bigger. And, you know, I'm never going to click the link because, <laughs> I, you know, come on, I'm like, I don't know what yeah. data hole I'm going to end up in, breach my security, all yeah, that kind bro. of stuff. I got a homie that got his phone hack clicking links, bro. I don't do that. Really? Yeah. Wait, no. Tell me what happened. No, they just click the link from a sketchy message, and they got locked out of the Instagram account. And That's then they got crazy. it back, and then the person sent them another sketchy link, and they clicked that link, and they got back in there. <laughs> hey, and bro, you deserve it. Now. Exactly, bro. At that point, I was like, bro, you deserve whatever comes yeah. out of this. But That's crazy. But I don't click no links, and I answer no phone number that ain't in my uh, contact oh, yeah, already. My, hey, yeah, bro, yeah. You got to shoot me a text, and it better make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that that's crazy bro because they uh i was watching i think it was like a joe rogan podcast they actually got some security um thing now and they're not going to use it for a normal person this is like you know, probably the people. president or yeah. something but they can literally now just send you a text and hack your phone you don't even have to open it if they send it and get to that phone they can hack you and turn on listening device video all that that's crazy yeah, yeah bro that's crazy yeah bro. so it's like you remember that uh that tech that mark cuban came out with a few years ago cyber dust that's what it was called it's the whole the whole thing is like you send text and they uh, disappear automatically kind of like snapchat except it's for text conversation oh no i missed that yeah. yeah and the validity i was always kind of like i mean why do people want this we got snapchat because snapchat was fresh out of there this is just for, and just for text but a lot of the higher level executives, things they be talking about. Yeah, that shit don't need to be out there. Yeah, don't yeah. need to be out there. You know, you know, like, when, you know when you see some of the things that come out and be and be not uh, taking companies down t today too. Yeah. Anyway, you're like, okay, I can see why they don't want. It. Yeah. Let alone the true security um, breaches and like finesse talk. Yeah, <laughs> you you're just talking about the stuff that you probably shouldn't be saying. You know, <laughs> like that's the stuff right there. So, so yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the uh, next subject, brother, TikTok Live, last TikTok subject for today. But we got to have a chance in that same conversation. Uh, this whole, like most of this talk today, right, has been just recapping a, a conversation. Uh, we talked about TikTok Lives because, like, most people don't quite understand that TikTok Lives are going to place that these other platforms haven't taken it yet. Yeah. The, the, the beauty of it is beautiful right <laughs> for like a better words like the biggest thing that i i noticed right that just let me say oh i need to pay attention to this was when i started to take note because i had been doing it out of habit but one day it clicked it's like yo they're showing somebody's live stream that i'm not following yeah all right instagram you got to follow that person to see their live stream just like a regular video pops up on my for you page Somebody's live stream is popping up on my For You page. I click that thing. I'm in there live. That's a discovery mechanism. Yeah. Where before, it's only a way to, you know, interact with people who are already following you. So that alone lets you know, oh, no, this is going to hit different. Right? That was what I was seeing early on. But now things have, like, we'll play a clip, but they've graduated to a point where you'll see people making dumb money doing interesting things i've seen a lot of crazy things but remember i sent you this clip with this rapper right here i'll play it man we'll play it on the live they really love it, I'm thumping, I gotta keep with it like this out of coffee. I cannot stop it, she calling like that's out of matter. You know that I really keep popping. Everybody wanna talk. Alright, so about the whole it. point of of this and why I think this is like important to share and show, right? It's just these numbers that Buddy's getting. Yeah. He's just straight up freestyling, right? If you got that type of Billy, especially, you know, we know freestyle is always trying to figure out how to make money. This is the new I'm rapping on the street. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He's yeah. just rapping Facts. on the live. Facts. And dude has 903,000 likes just as I'm watching this. I, I recorded it because I thought it was dope what I was going on. 
Look at all the hearts he's getting. Got he's getting 1,500 people in there. 1,500 people in there. You know what I mean? I never heard of this guy before, but this is just off of a live, and it, he probably does these a lot, you know what I mean, and mm -hmm. trains people to, like, come in and to continue to discover him through that. But look at all these uh, these these gifts, right? R remember the guy? Uh, do you remember who that was? The That's artist it. who was like, yo, like, getting a rose – is five cents, which is more than a stream. Who yeah, was it was uh, Nathan Fox. That was Nathan. Yeah, it was Nathan. Nathan. It's a, like, shout out to you, Nathan, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that right there is a crazy thing to think about. So, like, if you stay on live and you hustle, like, I know a lot of DJs that'll be on live. I'll watch them. Yeah. So, it's like, you're getting tips, and this money is adding up. This money is adding up versus getting a stream. But, and not only that, you're able to get sh discovered by a new audience. Those two alone, the money you're making, I know it's still not like a, a stupid amount just to say five cents per rose, but there's also bigger, you know, stickers yes, and yeah. gifts than, that, that you can get than that. But that's just a baseline. Literally, one of those is more than a stream. How, yeah. many streams do you, how many streams do you need to get five cents? Like 10? 10, 11? 10 streams yeah. to get to five cents, bro. All right? One rose, you get that. Yeah. So that's if you think about it in that in that different paradigm, and that's one of the big things about like escaping the way the music industry is trying to get you to think about music and consumption, yeah. you start to be able to take advantage of different moments, right? That's what a lot of artists like Russ do. Uh, Russell's now doing that, right? A lot of those artists that are even if they're taking advantage of some of the main music industry stuff, they're also on the, uh, the new shit. Yeah, they're doing oh, diving into the, the new stuff pretty much. Not even just the new though. It's just like the just the brink, the like the the edge where they're dealing with the world outside the industry, new or old, of how they are willing to get their fans or look at their fan base and consumption. Yeah. The whole relationship where the industry, a lot of times, they sell us on how we should look at ourselves, right? If you're an, if I'm an artist, right? Yeah. They sell us on how we should judge success. When most of how they judge success is based off of them as a corporation, numbers that they have to hit. First week numbers only matter if you're really at a label like that, right? Yeah. All right, okay, if you happen to be number one, that's something that you can market and, and flex and show, right? But then again, oftentimes leverage for a label deal. But if, like, so if you're at a label, it looks a lot better to have, I don't know, I'm just gonna say 10 million, that's a low number for a label. Let's just say 100 million streams in the first week. I'm just throwing that number out there versus having 100 million streams over two years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right? Or even, matter of fact, it's more valuable to, for them to see 100 million streams over the first week than it is for them to see 300 million streams over three years, two years. All right? Because there's so many incentives when it comes to, like, just corporate, right? It's just a... You gotta. So one thing that we forget about is this is a regular ass job, bro. Yeah. For people, yeah, it's a regular ass. Court. People get bonuses off of what how music performs yeah, at a label. Taxes. They get taxes. <laughs> they get promotions. Oh, this yeah. artist did well, and you did well in your job, right? They get fired. Yeah. It's a regular job for people on that side of things. So when you look at it and understand it that way, but you're not in that system, none of that stuff applies to you. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't mean that that can't be valuable or cool, right? Getting your Grammy doesn't mean much in terms of a fan base, but also you can flip that from a brand standpoint and get corporations to pay you more, yeah. right? So there's value to it, but don't assign it where it doesn't belong. And like Friday. I was, I, I was just about to say that. Who bro. mentioned it? I, I'll let you say it then. Like, I, I, it's funny, I saw somebody else mention that recently, but we've talked about that before. Oh, wait, well, I, I feel like he was about to say something else when I was about to say Oh, okay, okay. Well, look, <laughs> I was going to just say, like, everybody dropping their music on Friday. Okay, actually, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Well, okay. See, we're that's what I thought. Yeah, I, was, okay, I, know, yeah. I ain't know where else he could go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's exactly like that, right? Where it's like the, the Friday release only matters if you're trying to hit Billboard. I actually just had this conversation with the artist today. It's crazy. But I was like, yo, I was like, do you feel like you right now has a real chance of hitting billboard and they were like no i was like okay so why does it matter if you put your music out on friday now granted i also get you know people wanting to get the the like playlist relationships right most playlists update on friday but i mean but um sam when he did the curtis waters single release through through his label they dropped that on a tuesday and I remember he was freaking out. He was like, man, we're not going to know if we get the DSP support until Friday because we mm. chose not to drop on a Friday. 
Friday rolled around. They on New Music Friday. They on all these different places. Everything's good again, bro. Like the, the ship is back. The ship is back moving like it should be. Seeing mine. Yeah. So it's just like it's like man. There's so many of these like traditional music industry, I guess, models or methods that do not apply to like 99 percent of music artists. And it's like I feel like like you said, bro. The game has no rules when you're beneath the industry. Like it's just like get in how you can get in. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Be as creative as you can be. You Facts. know what I'm saying? Break through however you got to break. Nobody, people only talk shit about you while you're trying to break through. As soon as you break through, it's like, oh, that dude was genius, bro. That, that was a crazy ass idea he came up with. <laughs> like, that shit was, that shit was fun. Exactly. So it's like, I don't get artists who force themselves to play by the rules of a game that they're not a part of yet. It's like, bro, and don't. And that you're going to lose. Yeah, and that you're going to lose that. Yeah, it's like, you're not even supposed to be over there. And you're trying to, <laughs> it's like your little brother trying to, like, hoot with you and your friends, bro. It's like, bro, you're not ready yet, bro. Right. Like, one day you're going to grow. You're going to be big and strong. Right. You, you can post up with us. But until exactly. then, bro, go back over there. Right yeah. there. That, that word right there, the post up. Yeah. You out there crying because you're getting the post yeah. up and I'm using my strength. It's like, bro, it don't matter. You got better handles and all that stuff. I'm using my strength. Yeah, I'm bro. winning. It is what it is. You ain't supposed to be over here. Yeah, it's like, bro, you seven, bro. Of course I'm going to violate you physically. You know what I'm saying? Like, we about to win this game by any means necessary. It's like, bro, go back over there. Hoop and dominate who you can dominate. And then you're going to get stronger. You're going to get bigger and get better. Then come back over here and play the game with us. But I, I look at music the same way. It's like yep. every, that people want to jump into a game playing by rules that don't apply to them. And then when they lose, everybody's looking at them and like, you know you didn't have to do that, right? Like, you didn't have to do it that way. There's... So many other ways you could have went about this thing. And so, to me, that's where the TikTok Live thing becomes interesting because it's still too new to really say, I guess, what kind of impact it's going to have on ours. But I really do feel like we're starting to see this weird renaissance where I think people would rather be an influencer than a music artist. I don't think it's fully there Mm. yet, but I think we're getting there because it's like, but now information about music is coming out and we're learning about how much these artists don't get paid, right? Or how much they're really not getting paid. Right. Reports are coming about influencers and we're learning how much a lot of them make. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, bro, you making that from YouTube? You making that from TikTok? And so to see it in real time is different. I had a live once where there was a guy who was taking donations to sing songs, like whatever songs somebody wanted him to sing. He could like, yeah, donate whatever you want to donate to me and I'll sing it. Man, I watched him make like three, four thousand dollars in like an hour and a half. That dude, I haven't seen him on my timeline in a while, but there was a point where like he was going live like four or five times a week. If I if I'm assuming low end five hundred dollars high, let's say that was the highest he ever got at three at three, four thousand dollars. It's like, man, he's still making like seven to ten thousand dollars a week if he's doing that consistently. Yeah. I don't know any independent artist that would turn that down. And I don't know any who have figured out a system yet to make it that quickly and for that that little amount of work you know what yeah. I'm saying and so it's like I think as more of those people start to come out and of course as TikTok kind of like evolves the whole platform and the way they kind of run it hopefully a lot more of the RSC and go like like you said bro it's like damn I could come over here hang out on this TikTok live for an hour make six seven hundred dollars which isn't nothing but it's like if you would did the same amount of work put six hundred people to your music you know what I'm saying like you would have made like forty cents so it's like, oh, you could do both. You could do it, make the donation money, have those people funnel over to your music. You make that money, and then you use all of it to kind of like keep keep the shit going. Exactly. And it, what's crazy about it is, it is, I was having this conversation with another artist too. But I was like, what's interesting about it is that Gen Z and younger, like they're they're fully ingrained in like donation culture because a lot of them grew up in Twitch, right? Yeah, Twitch, yeah. I would argue, was the first yeah, platform yeah. that started getting people used to like, yo, you like this credit? Yo, give them some money, because we ain't about to pay them. So in the don't... US, at least, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yo, bro, you on, you on... oh yeah, because tic... they had the, what, what's Chinese TikTok? They were doing it pretty heavy, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've been doing that across Long... a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. the WhatsApp, like, you know, text apps, they've always been doing stickers and, yeah, and yeah. all that type of stuff, yeah. Yeah, so, but it's like a lot of these, like, new age kids, bro, like, they grew up with their, their favorite Twitch streamer being like, yo, donate money in, in the chat, bro. YouTube has been doing the whole super subscriber thing for like years mm-hmm. at this point. And so it's like, there's a period where that was all weird. Now we're moving to the period where like, that's normal. Like yep. fans go into these different platforms thinking like, man, I got I got five dollars on me, bro. If I like what I see, I'll throw you a couple, I'll throw you a couple cents, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And that shit adds up to yeah. where it's like, bro, you got, you know, you got a hundred fans throwing you a penny you know, says whatever, but you got ten thousand fans throwing your opinion. And they're doing it consistently every day, bro. Like that shit, that shit start to stack up. So I don't know, man. I think like the lives are looking like a pretty viable like monetization model for like 
any artist who can figure out the gamification element of it, because that's the big thing I've been seeing with it. Like the, even the guy Clippy shows, like you can just go live and like regular talk. You might make a little bit of money if you got like if you have the audience for it already. If you are new, going back to like you said, the whole discoverability aspect of it, like we're more than likely. I had a TikTok live one time, bro. Where I, it was like forty people in there, and I know where it shot up to like sixteen hundred people in it. Oh yeah, I remember you saying. Yeah, bro. So it's yeah, like bro. I know where sixteen. 1,570 people were in there that did not, did not know who I was. <laughs> did not know who I am, bro. You know what I'm saying? It just came out of nowhere. But it's like, if you figure out something that you can do that's not just entertaining to your audience, but also entertaining to random people, and you can gamify it, right? You can have a tiered system in it or some type of competition in it or, or whatever, bro. You can make a lot of money off these TikTok lives. Yeah, well, and this is just in the beginning of it. Because remember... You know, I remember you told me that Aussie was doing tarot cards. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people now doing like tarot cards or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's a whole space, right? So get those, you know, do the readings. That artist that we first started talking about in this conversation, Free he's styles. freestyling. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen literally people like throwing ping pong balls into cups, not beer pong though, like doing like random complicated devices and that's the whole thing and you're just watching until they make it and I stay on way longer than I, I should you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah. Like, it's all kind of random different things matter of fact I literally I could record it like me going through a whole bunch of lives just because I wanted like to show how random it is yeah. right? I'm gonna like put it up somewhere or whatever like, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere man like TikTok goes everywhere and it's funny you talked about the amount of money especially these YouTubers make man the um I was you know the lead attorney mm -mm. oh man he's actually in Atlanta I believe um but he's like a divorce attorney right and um well I don't know if he's still practicing but he's like 40s or whatever and <laughs> one he was like yo if you're over like if he's like if you're 25 you're making 45 thousand dollars a year cool if you you know 30 30 33 all right, you know, cool. Well, he's like, but if you over your 40, he's basically like, quit and become a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically where he was coming from. And he said he started, he wasn't making that little money, but he was, uh, he started at 43 mm. doing YouTube, 45 now, and he's making 50K a month. 50K a month? Yeah. Crazy. And he was like, this conversation was actually about like Cardi B's trial, right? And Tasha K. Uh, unwind with Tasha K. I yeah. mean, if I get her the whole name, and she owes that forty million, parent, four four million, and he was like at the case and stuff. All right, so he would like he was talking about some of the things going on in the courtroom and everything. But yeah, he was saying that like, do y'all? He asked like the chat, do y'all think Tasha K has this money? And a lot of people were like, nah, 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 nah. And a couple people said yes, and he was like, it's funny that the only people I see saying yes that she got the money. Are YouTubers, yeah, <laughs> and that's when he started breaking down. He was like, "Yo, man, it was like I, I think he was making. I mean, he just walked down from when he was making 10k to, to uh, to, uh, what 15k a month to 20k a month, and now doing 50k. And he's like, she got over a million followers. I only got, I think he has like 150, 200k followers. Yeah, you know, and he's like, hey, just imagine what she's making doing the numbers that she does, especially even you add in going lives. Yeah, and these people who go live." Full circle, bro. Yeah. Cause he, I was watching his. It was a recording of his live stream. But if you look at him, like Kevin Samuels, right? His whole thing was just going live. You yeah. hear a whole lot of people like, man. Matter of fact, we were uh, when we were at the event in L.A. It was like the whole oh, yeah, the they, four yeah. YouTubers who were like doing stupid numbers. It was like what three uh, white guys and uh, Vanessa. They were. One of the guys was like, I don't know how Kevin like just does those lives. Well, yeah. you know, you know, RIP, but like just goes lives, keeps the attention, everybody's trained, and Every then you're day. done. Yeah. You do your live show, doing hundreds of thousands, even millions of of, uh, of views off of it, and getting super chat money, then you get to be the ad dollars when that thing plays. Yeah. So like the amount of money they making and just from going live, man, yeah. and doing that in the right way, that junk is crazy. Yeah, it's like people people it's just like are, are itching to give that money to somebody. Somebody hey, yeah, my, hey might as well be you, bro. Hey, for real. It's out there. So yeah, I appreciate yo, actually, because I'm going uh to Vegas for Thanksgiving. Okay. To see my, uh, you know, my, my my uncle and aunt or whatever. Okay. And this is a perfect conversation because the live streams, right? And you talked about 
the culture that exists now that didn't exist, especially in America, of donating money, right? Yeah. Especially the people online through those chats, Twitch, now TikTok, Super Chat on, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, bless their heart, they still trying, right? Yeah, yeah. The beauty about this is somebody is going to, everybody's going to come up out their money, might as well be me, right? Yeah. And this is the Vegas setup, right? Because if you watch all these lives, right, and you see all these people donating, you might, you might not make that donation that time to that person. Yeah. But you go to the next live, and eventually you've seen it done enough, you're more likely to donate. Yeah. And that's how Vegas is set up, bro. Like, the first time I went, and I was like, bro, it's casinos everywhere. Like, it's slots everywhere in the gas station, in the airport. And, I mean, it's vices everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What you want to smoke, what you want to drink, who you want to smash, it's all there. And somebody's going to get your money. Yeah. You think that you're going to be strong, but even you being strong is way weaker than you usually are in a different environment. <laughs> yeah. Because the yeah. whole environment is set up to take your money. Yeah. It's the strip club as a city, right? Yeah. And now, you know, TikTok yeah. Live, these live streams across these platforms, that's the strip club on your phone. Damn. It's crazy, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's a, <laughs> a crazy way to look at it. Bro, yeah. <laughs> bro, that's going to be a lot of money made on these lives, bro. <laughs> now, I'm already saying it, bro. Like, I, I believe. Like, I'm telling everybody I know. Like, yo, just at least try. It's what you got to lose, bro. Best case scenario, you make some money. Worst case scenario, you know, you weren't doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, bro, that's <laughs> the best part, part about the uh, content. I remember, actually, uh, when um, Buddy mentioned I'm making 50K a month, of course, he probably, you know, you pay for your house, whatever. But, like, generally speaking, your overhead is so fucking low. Yeah. You're just posting videos on YouTube, making that much money, let alone the other numbers we've seen on YouTube. Yeah. But you're making that. So, imagine, yeah, you are making 50K a year on on YouTube, just posting, not having to travel to work, or not having to deal with a boss that you don't want to, right? not having to deal with all these other circumstances even that even goes back why would i want to deal with all this other stuff in terms of monetizing music in this entire game when i could literally just sit in my room talk about some shit that i'm interested in and people follow me and i make money that way versus yeah. play the artist game yeah like that's harder yeah that's like way harder. <laughs> like, why way harder. you know what i'm saying why would i do that so yeah man <sighs> these lives man these lives i think i'm a little we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna extrapolate these clips Pull them out into the hemisphere, but I think we need to have more conversations and like pull out. We, we should find some dope people, bro. If y'all know some dope people, y'all seen some great lives. Oh, bro, I already got like six on my, on my phone, bro. We, I been, every time it. I come across one, I think it's five. I'm, I'm recording it. Hey, we need, yeah, recording. we need to, we're gonna share it out <laughs> content. Maybe we start doing some talks with people, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's gonna have their own flow and formula because it's just all a show. But man, it's like there goes the cycles again, right? You got, Live TV right, mm -hmm. has taken a toll except for sports because sports, obviously, you know, it's, it's just best to experience it live. You yeah. know, like, all right. You don't want to hear about it. Yeah, later. they already won. And yeah. it was like, I don't want to. I already know what happens. It just ruins it, right? <laughs> so they're, they're doing well. But now live streams are coming back. So that's that same thing. It's still that cycle, bro. You, yeah. People never escape the cycles. Yeah, but they just reformat it for whatever people want to be on. It's all it is. That, that point in time. Same shit, different platform. But I wouldn't be surprised if they start having interstitial ads on live streams. It's probably going to get there. I think. I, I Actually, no, nah, never mind. I can't say that yet. I, I, just, I think it's getting there because TikTok has a whole thing where you can market your lives now. But that's pushing it out to other people. So right, right, yeah, right. But right. I think they are gonna get that because TikTok doesn't have a space where the live can live for them to make ad revenue off of it. Right. And eventually they're gonna want some ad revenue off that shit. Yep. Or they're taking a crazy percentage of the donations, which might be making up for the the fact they're not making ad revenue. But I think yeah, at some point I definitely think so. But especially if it's a long ass live, bro, I'm throwing right. I'm, I'm throwing a thirty second ad. Exactly. In there. <laughs> and make it clear to people what we talking about. So if y'all listen to podcasts, right? If you go back to listen to, I don't know somebody's podcast from earlier this year, they have the ability to have new ads in that old podcast, right? So I was listening to a podcast from July of this podcast that I listened to, but he's all, they're all talking about this water that they're advertising. It's like some water you can get at public, some mineral water or sparkling water. 
And it's like, dang, this is the exact same ad. But I know they weren't doing this back then. Because yeah. I remember listening back then. Because it can update. So if you think about the company, I got a podcast company. I got a, um, or just a catalog of content. For me to constantly monetize with new adver- advertisers all the way to my back catalog without having to edit the video, right? Like, and, and do the ad live, that's extremely valuable. You add that to live streams, bam, same thing. Yeah. But what if there was a way that you could do that during a live stream? I feel like somebody's gonna try to figure that out too. Yeah, I think it's gonna get there. It's, 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 it's natural. Because it's commercials. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm Again, saying, but there's no way I'm about shit. to let this creator sit on my platform for hours making all this money <laughs> and I'm not throwing that. It's, it's going to get there, bro. I think TikTok's whole model is like making it look super creator friendly in the beginning. And they come behind and be like, all right, y'all love it. Now go, go a little bag for hey, it. You know what I'm saying? TikTok, not TikTok, Instagram did the same thing with um, IGTV. Like you get ads on your like videos over whatever the, the, the length is, right? Uh-huh. You get ads on that shit. Like, I go back and look yeah. at my videos sometimes like, oh, you made, you know, 80 cents from ads on this video. I'm like, damn, I get ads on my video. That's crazy, right? So, I think the fact that TikTok, they're either going to have to A, make a space for the lives to live so they can run ads on it, or they're going to start running ads on the lives while they're in, in, in action. I think it's going to be that That's one. That's the pimp shit right yeah, there, bro. bro. Crazy. You, you on the pimp talk, man. <laughs> Like, hey man, you ain't about to sit on my platform. Making money? I ain't taking a piece. <laughs> I ain't Come on, bro. No piece. Come on now. Well, go ahead and give me that piece and Band. go on back out there. <laughs> <Band>. <laughs> Throw that thing, sing a song, do whatever you gotta do. But they already <laughs> violated them on the uh donation percentage too. I think TikTok take like fifty or something. Thirty, fifty percent, something it's, it's crazy. Big, yeah. So maybe big. not then. They already violated them enough. Yeah. I mean, enough? What is enough? <laughs> <laughs> What is enough? <laughs> they probably, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like, bro, if I, they gotta be crazy, bro. Like, looking at your analytics and saying, like, damn, this credit made 100K last night. I mean, we made at least 50K. I'm gonna go check them donation tickets real quick to make sure that shit, <laughs> to make sure that shit paid out. Oh, oh no, nah, he 20K short. Hey, block him. <laughs> Sean will not play that shit over here. It takes off. <laughs> Oh, he had the cash app in the bio? Block him. We're going to play that shit over here. Hey, bro, for real. Yeah. That's exactly what they be doing, man. But, like, legit. But they're a lot, I think they're a lot more lean on it now. I had a lot of ones, but I got kicked off of just saying the word cash app. That shit was crazy, bro. That shit happened. <laughs> Somebody was like, yo, what's your, in the comments, was like, yo, what's your cash app? I was like, what's my cash app? And it just ended immediately. And I was like, oh, they really don't play that shit. I ain't never, I haven't said the C word on TikTok a lot since. <laughs> Bro, TikTok, TikTok be having people like they in prison or something, bro, on their lives. They're like, oh, nope, I won't say it. I'm, I'm going to write it on the wall. Nah, that's my shirt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over the rhymes with Ash app or something like bro. Yeah, that shit is funny, bro. It's like it, TikTok, <laughs> like, they, they really have a stronghold of the game, and I don't really see it changing for a very long time. Um, but, you know, look, it is what it is. The, the I think the benefits outweigh the cons from an individual yeah. level. Yeah, 100%. The macro, okay, look, they, there might be a little bit of uh, strong arming going on, but as a way to get up and the amount of visibility they give you, just look at it that way. Like, yeah. hey, you don't have to pay for the marketing out of pocket, so you're getting like a little, you know, a loan yeah. that you never have to touch the money for. Yeah, it's like we bring you the money. Yeah, we're bringing yeah. you the money. We yeah. just we just want a little commission. Like, That's all that it's is. It's like a sales rope, bro. We're yeah. gonna we gonna bring you the leads, man. If you yeah. give them to spend some money, we gonna we gonna all cut that, bro. But we brought them to you. You know what I'm saying? That's hey, that's all it they, is. They taking the YouTube route, bro. I was saying that like where YouTube, you know, anytime a YouTuber comes out has that criticism with YouTube, they never respond back. They're like. Nigga, where else you gonna go? Yeah. Like, what other platform Come gonna, on. gonna cash you out a hundred bands? Where you going? Yeah. Instagram? Yeah, exactly. You, you gonna, gonna go to Instagram? Yeah, like, Come on, bro. <laughs> and I feel like TikTok is starting to like get to that level of uh, cockiness. They cockiness. They, they, they in their yeah. bag. Yeah. They, they feeling yeah. themselves. Yeah. Like, bro, where else you gonna go, bro? Hey, man, we just pushed 300,000 people to your video in 20 minutes. Bro. Where else you going? Who gonna oh, do yeah. you like that? You're like, damn, man. You're right. <laughs> My bad, y'all. Oh, man. No, no more cash ups. <laughs> Oh man! Well, all right. Let's let, let's let's roll out like this because we there's more topics that we want to actually touch on, but we aren't gonna touch on them today. Yep. You know, we still trying to figure out some of this flow for the. Uh, you know, we we've been spending time getting the room right and shit. Yep. I hold your Corey's background look a little bit better. You know what I mean? Let us know. It's a little smoother. I legit ironed the fucking the, the cutter <laughs> curtains. You uh, know he really I mean? did. He really. I watched him do it. <laughs> 
it's so, pretty, you know, pretty crispy back there. Yeah, it's a little lie. smoother, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, you know, if y'all keep watching, we can get an even better camera, you know what I'm saying? You know, so so keep watching this thing. Let us know. Give us y'all feedback. Um, you know, we like having these conversations, want to help people out. Uh, anybody who wants to be in an interview, we ain't doing interviews no time soon. Let us figure our life out first. You yeah, know right. what I'm saying? Let's Please, figure, let's I ain't asking to episode 56. 50. 56. Yeah. I, I like that one. Yeah, 56, bro. Ooh. I mean, you got to keep up to even though we got that. But like, oh, shit, that's like episode 56. Let me get that. Like, oh, damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wait till then, we won't be mad at you. You know what I mean? We might dub you, but it's out of love. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we won't be mad at you. Just know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, folks. This is another episode of No Labels Necessary. We are out. I'm Sean. I'm Corey. Peace. Peace.